what is going on you guys welcome back to the channel so this morning me and leo we took off to uh the junkyard but i am not using it for this video this video is going to be literally what the video is going to be about which is working on leo's car so last night leo showed up and we went right to it we took off the windshield to expose pretty much all of the rusted area on his um windshield like jam if you guys haven't seen the previous videos up until this point we started painting leo's car in sections kind of how i did my flip rx crx and the reason why we did that is because of time because of work and all that stuff and the reason why the back half is not painted with the sunroof is because we want to take care of all of this rust right here under the windshield so that way we can get all the rust to be gone hopefully mostly gone and then we're gonna paint pretty much all of this including the sunroof all of the uh, jam underneath um you know obviously the same color as the rest of the car so today's goal is to pretty much repair all the rust patch all the holes we got quite a handful of holes right here down here all of this and uh, a couple on that side the goal is to use this entire day day to night repair all of the rust while leo is going to sand the rest of the car out and he's going to do a lot of uh small like body filler work on small dings and stuff and um i have this door right here that i can use for uh patch panel so we kept this door here because i'm going to cut pieces of this to form shape onto the uh, windshield jam so that way we can entirely patch the hole with a new piece instead of trying to weld those really thin uh sheet metal to close the hole up um you know and having a chance of blowing through the rotted metal so that's today's goal before this entire video's goal is to literally lay paint down on the rest of the car to make it all one color so i'm not gonna waste any time i'm just gonna get right to it let's clean up the windshield jam the quickest and most effective way to take off seam sealer or window glue is to use this guy this is very scary to use but it works really fast so go ahead and get this on a grinder freaky fast i caught this on my shirt one time bro not the business You can see right here on the lower driver's side, we have some pretty, pretty nasty holes. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut a square out of this, and then I am gonna pretty much transfer that to the door to cut out the same amount of um, sheet and then form fit it into this section. This is super thin because it's rotted out so long so far underneath the molding that the metal itself is super thin. Now this one right here, I might be able to get a way to set the settings on really low to not blow through. I might just be able to tack it shut. All of this is just eating out metal, but not all the way through. So this pretty much just needs to be like um, treated. This whole section right here, I'm going to cut it out. Same deal and uh, patch this up the same as the other side. You can see right here, pretty chewed out. So cut a little square section, put another piece in there. All of this is just, you know, uh, eating metal but not all the way through so all of that just needs to be treated down here i'm surprised it didn't eat through i'm just going to tack some of these little pinholes in and then just treat all of that and then you know what i'm saying like uh prep it for paint the whole top section right here almost clean there are some rust spots on the surface but not like all the way through so that's good all of this right here just needs to be sanded down a little bit more to be treated
So I just pretty much spent some time to cut out pretty much all of the um, rusted affected area. We got this big section, this medium section, and then we got this small little square right here. The uh, biggest part is this bottom driver's side. I cut probably about like four inches long right here. And then over here, maybe about two and a half. And then the other side, a small little rectangle patch. So I just went along the channel with the wire wheel to get a lot of, the, well, to get most of the rust off. I mean, there's some areas that I gotta get underneath the paint, but this is not my concern area just yet. I wanna take care of all the patch holes and then we'll get back to the, um, the channel itself. So this right here, I cut it off Leo's old door, which is all banged up. And uh, I cut it off on the body line so we can already have that pre-curve to kind of help me with the uh, curvature of the channel itself so you can see how it's uh, at an angle so pretty much all I'm going to do is measure it up um, close tack it in and then just kind of massage it in until we get it nicely fitted in here I do have some zinc weld through primer this right here is zinc weld through primer this will um, allow primer to be applied to like say all of the inside and everything and the weld will still weld through and not blow through so I'm gonna be using this for the inside before welding it up so I think what I'm gonna do right now is just I'm gonna form shape this into the channel I'm not gonna show you guys like the whole nine because this is gonna take some time I am gonna show you guys the after because the goal is like I said for this entire video and hopefully it won't be super long is to get this car painted so leo already got this whole entire side sanded down the other side had already been sanded um weeks ago when we were working on this side so this is kind of already ready to rock and roll so he got this all sanded out he did find a couple low spots like right here and a little ding up here you can see that but um he also removed the sunroof because he's going to be prepping that as well as the panel itself so he's going to do that i'm going to do this Let's make some more progress. <whistles> 10 o'clock on a dot, power tools no more. So, a couple hours have now flew by and we've got a lot done to the car. There's still one more thing I have to do, which I'll show you guys right now. So Leo, actually has been prepping literally both quarter panels he's um this is the sunroof panel that sits on top of the uh where's the mechanism i uh, put it to the side side okay well this is the top part of the sunroof and because leo's still retaining the sunroof and because it still works we're gonna be obviously painting it as well originally we we're gonna leave it white and just take care of all the uh perimeter of the uh the roof itself first but i told him i said we're already here man just pull it off so i told him I said you know what man because originally we weren't going to repair the bottom right and if we didn't paint it it would have been rusted out anyways but it's light rust so i said you know what um we could have left it untreated and just it could have just been whatever it was and uh we decided that well since it's already here might as well just cut all the rust out of it and just use the um rust-oleum instantly convert rust to a protected paintable surface so this is a rust reformer and all you pretty much got to do is just spray it over the rust infected area which actually we we leo not we but leo has knocked off most of the rust so we're just gonna dunk this on there and just let that do its thing you know reform the rust or whatever it does but we're not gonna be painting the underneath we're only gonna be focused on painting the outside so that's almost ready to rock and roll leo got down with the bodywork right here in the quarter panel um you know what I'm saying? I showed him a couple of times with the door, with the trunk, with the bumper, and I just kind of let him battery cut off on me. And uh, what I was saying was, I left Leo alone to do his thing. He did the filler work on pretty much all of the visible dents after blocking it and finding all of the low spots. So right here, he, um, you know, I I'm still, I'm still guiding Leo to um do body filler work and uh he picked it up really quickly and uh, one thing i told him is don't try to rely on the da and uh really get down with your hands and really feel the body of the car feel the lines and you know if there are dense or high or low spots feel it out with your hand you're not going to see it with the da sometimes but 
Leo has been going to work with the sanding block. He did the filler work here. He the first the first layer he did um, not as much per the dent size. So he had a low spot. Right now it is guy coated. It's been har uh, hardened for a cool minute now. So he's ready to sand it. But guy coated. He blocked it out. Has some black still in there, which you can feel by hand that there's still a low spot. He went back and filled that. He did this one right here. Going up here, he did this one on the first shot. He did it really great, nice and smooth with the block. Um, we're gonna do some filler work to this right now because I had just finished all of the uh, windshield part. He got down with the backside here. He found some small little dings. You can see he took care of that one, found another one there. Um, quarter panel on this side had already been done, but uh, he did get up to the top here because this was also in part of you know being under the windshield and stuff so he did all this this one right here this was a low spot he filled it in again i told him right off the bat i was like i can see the low spot even on top of the uh, first filler work so this is the second one guide coated i spent hours patching up all of the holes and stuff that was on the windshield channel and let me show you guys real quick this is the last one i just finished like 15 minutes ago you can see that is all patched up all shaped in just ready for some filler work on the top not too worried about the bottom this right here was fortunate for us that it didn't actually have a giant hole it was just a bunch of pinholes that i welded shut and grinded it all down you can see it right there nothing here this was just all light surface rust on the other side the other side was a little more complex because we have more patches we had to do so you can see on this side this was the four inch um five or so uh patch that we had to do you can see where i cut it there cut it there weld it all up spot welded it back in grind it all nice and flat that is ready for some filler work top over here all all boxed in as well i had to cut and shape this out of the uh channel first and then once i got it all nice and you know kind of perfect put it in weld it up it was crazy because the uh, material was eating out so bad that it was super thin so it kept blowing through but i was able to get it all tacked in with the settings on three on the welder and uh, got it all nicely sanded out in the contours we needed to fit the new windshield all this right here is ready for filler work and uh pretty much everything underneath has been uh zinc primered zinc weld primer so hopefully the underneath is not gonna like form rust anytime soon with the pro with the, with the primer that's like helping it under there so it's cold it's condensation a lot of bare metal hopefully we don't have any issues with um surface rust tomorrow but if surface rust forms tomorrow it's not a big deal to get it back off because it's just surface rust eating through metal with rust takes time so if we get rust tomorrow we'll we'll just sand it again not a big deal We're literally back the next day and obviously we lost a ton of daylight. So I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. Last night me and Leo, we finished up at about two o'clock, uh, got ready to go to sleep and uh, woke up a little bit late today because me and Leo were both tired just trying to prep this entire car last night. Uh, we also had to do a lot more work uh, this morning when we came out, Leo came out here, started sanding the car with the final grits. And then when I got up and came out here, um, we had to take off to the store go get some material we got some epoxy primer i was told that you can use epoxy primer uh underneath the channel so that way the window guys primer would adhere to it and then the urethane will adhere to his primer so this whole entire channel has been layered up like three coats of epoxy primer in beige i thought it was red but it's beige and uh it's been drying we washed the entire car over there we dried it off entirely over there we moved it over here we masked it completely down all of the areas that we are not painting so in today's paint session we're going to be doing pretty much the roof the pillars the quarters on both sides and uh we still got to tape up this right here because we're not painting the epoxy for where the window sits we're going to be taping that off in just a second here and uh, the other thing is on the other side we're going to be painting the lower door just because when we painted this door last time we didn't want to take off the plastic panel but um we ended up taking it off on the driver's side door when we painted that 
I told Leo that because we took it off on the other door, we might as well do this one right, take it off at this door. So we taped it off at the molding line, sanded this entire bottom end right here, got the hard line off because it was painted before. And we're gonna be painting the lower door as well. So that way, all of that is the same color as the rest of the car. So the wheels, we're gonna be um, putting a blanket over it when, when we shoot each side but we're pretty much ready to go everything's masked off everything's wiped down once we got all the paint set up right here not gonna lie to you guys it's kind of too red for me On the southern panel, start the edges first, and then run from the top down. So we're reaching out and down instead of down going up because when you got fresh paint going from the bottom and you go up, with this shit in your hand, you can drop right into the paint. You can start from the top and work your way down because the air pressure will build anything on the surface of the uh, summer, the air will blow it off. Okay? So I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. Uh, we had some issue with the paint gun. Now, Harbor Freight paint gun, I normally just use them for a couple of times and toss it, but that gun probably has about maybe four run times on it and I cleaned it out every single time. Um, but I guess what had happened was the needle that controls the fluid was gunked up. And I think the needle didn't allow the fluid to come out enough. If you look at the spray pattern, this is maxed out and it's only about four inches wide. So I was trying to figure out why we couldn't get a wider angle. And I literally had to like stop, take apart the gun, clean it up and all that and uh, get back to it. You can see it sprayed a little bit wider, but not how it used to spray, which was like, I don't know, almost an eight to 10 inch span. So um, because we were in the middle of spraying with that, you know, issue, I kind of just you know figured out what um the gun was doing as far as spraying and how much fluid was coming out so on and so forth i just continued spraying literally i uh, went closer went a little slower let the fluid kind of build up you know for the first layer i did go super heavy but maintained my um like technique so i didn't get any runs so if you look at this side right here literally this is the first pass on the gun even though i've been <laughs> spraying like 10 layers on it uh it came out pretty cool now if you look we do have some uh, dirt metallics and stuff which is granted you guys already know how we do it here in the garage in the middle of the night you know and uh it actually came out pretty glassy i'm not gonna lie to you guys it looks really glassy now in the last video when we painted the doors yes it was orange peel and all that i admit to it but for the issues that we were having and just kind of plowed right through it this came out freaking awesome now because i spent so much time wasting freaking fluid on this side i didn't actually get to the other side but i stopped cleaned 
filled the cup back up and we were able to lay down like i would say two medium coats on this side as the first coat so i guess you can call it two coats you can't really see it and that's why i didn't record it because it's so dark on this side but um we do have some decent clarity now mind you guys i went pretty quick with this one so it's not as shiny and it will get shinier as the layer goes so the roof itself this is where the issue initially started so the roof is kind of dry but also on its first coat so we're just gonna let this flash actually it's been sitting here for about 10 minutes now but we're gonna let it flash a little bit more and then we're gonna mix up some fresh paint i just cleaned out the gun again to make sure we don't have that issue and uh we're pretty much just gonna plow right through this guys um nighttime darkness camera doesn't really pick up gopro doesn't have iso adjustment so i'm not really going to show you guys too much i'm just gonna get right to it get this thing painted and uh we'll kind of pick up with you guys when it's all said and done So I'm sitting on my chair in the most awkward position ever, right? Kind of hurts my butt, but kind of want to talk about a few things here before I show you guys the car. We, uh, we obviously painted the car in the dark at night in the cold. It's November and, um, I've done this plenty of times before. You guys have seen it on the channel throughout the years. I paint in the dark. And sometimes I paint into the night because of, um, you know, the restraints that we have. So, if you guys don't know, I mentioned it before. If you guys don't follow Leo's channel at, you know, CRX um, SIB52, Leo works a hefty job with um, a lot of hours, right? And his schedule only allow him some free time. So we've been we've been tinkering with Leo's car for a cool minute now and we've been doing I don't know if you guys have seen the videos but we've been doing paint work like sections at a time and you know sometimes into the night because of him getting off of work late and stuff like that. This week Leo only has three day off um, and every other week he has four days off but he only had three days off this week and if you guys don't know Leo lives an hour away from me. So Leo came over here after work and stayed the night so we can get cracking on this car early in the morning or at least for him because you know I wake up super late. So we spent the first day prepping everything that we didn't finish prepping, which was yesterday. So we did all of the prep work on the quarters, the sunroof and all that. We spent a lot of time repairing all of the rust spots under the uh, window channel. And uh, the goal today, which is Friday, we were supposed to get this thing painted. But um, after doing some further research, we had to do some run around, find some epoxy for the window channel. So that way the primer can stick to that. And then the urethane will stick to their primer. But uh, we did a lot of prep work on the channel. So Leo has three day off this week. And the goal was to get this car fully painted as far as the quarter pillars sunroof goes. The main goal was to take care of all the rust under the windshield. And we didn't want to paint the pillars until we repair that rust. And Leo also needed a glass windshield because his was cracking like 20 million spots. So we didn't want to wait until it got colder. So I told Leo, let's just get down to it. Let's get to work. So with the three days he has off the first day, we pretty much took care of like all of the body works on the quarter, uh, all the body work on the sunroof, the sunroof, the sunroof panel itself right here. So I pretty much spent my main focus under the channel while Leo was working on the back half of the car and I took care of all of the rust spots, all of the uh, metal that needed uh, like patched up and stuff like that. So we took care of all that on the first day. Now we were supposed to get ready to paint the second day, but uh, when morning came, after doing some research and talking to some of my friends, we had to revise our process for uh, prepping the window channel for the window installers primer that they're going to use hopefully they use so we had to do some run around we had to go get some epoxy and stuff like that prep the channel epoxy the channel and then uh layer it up and then let it dry obviously and then we had to wipe the car down and because we losing daylight a lot earlier now we kind of fell almost into the night the moment we started to uh get this car into paint when the night falls it gets cold and when it gets cold in november we have condensation in the air so again, before I show you guys the paint, 
I just want to let you guys know that because we painted in the night, because we painted in the cold, I definitely felt like I was rushing myself to do this because of the time constraint. Because tomorrow is Leo's last day off and the goal was to get this car painted today so it has all day tomorrow to dry out because he still needs to drive this car home and the goal is to have it dry tonight into tomorrow and hopefully a window guy can come and slap a new windshield on then leo can take it home and go to work on sunday so that's why we did what we did and um you know i've had plenty of great results before shooting at night and stuff like that you guys have seen the h22 crx uh the flip rx and you know done plenty of night paint jobs but we had a couple issues that um surfaced up and i think uh one of the main reason which is 100 percent my fault i just don't drain my freaking tank like i don't i don't know why i don't do it but i don't drain my tank now we have a filter on there and uh, it was actually shooting fine up until what the second layer maybe and that's when leo noticed the drip on the roof and it kind of like you know when you got water on fresh paint you just don't touch it right so we have water in the tank my fault um, I'm using an old gun that I've just ran plenty of like projects through and for as cheap as it was I should just toss it and get a new one but I do clean the hell out of it after I finished using it so I didn't think like oh well that's not gonna give me any issue because you know it's like using a new gun except it was a used gun so I threw it in the trash I didn't want to deal with you know whatever issue the gun may have given me tonight in a later project so in the trash it goes we are painting what bugs flying around. We are painting near a dirt lot, even though we watered everything on the floor. Um, stuff still get kicked up on the paint. I mean, that's almost kind of expected when you're shooting in an open environment. Like, if you guys have been on channel long enough, you guys know I used to tarp everything down. I haven't tarped anything down as of late, as far as paint project goes. So there's a lot of factor that goes into why sometimes the paint job or paint project doesn't come out as nice as you want it to but it is what it is you know what i mean and a lot of this stuff is correctable even though i explain a lot of this stuff and for those who paint knows like a lot of the factors that i said will create paint jobs looking as not as great as it should have we did what we had to do we did it in the time that we had and um at the end of the day though leo the car is one color <laughs> and it is 100 percent correctable right because I don't know if you guys see it. Let me zoom in on his face. He's smiling because I don't remember the last time you seen your car one full color shining, right? I don't think even when I bought my car. See, when I bought my car, I bought it from an old lady. And she left it abandoned, so the paint was horrible. It was abandoned for one. It was also repainted, so it was fading, that single stage that was on it. So this car had never seen gloss before. If he's happy with how this car came out, he's going to be super stoked when we correct it. So, this is... I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this is more towards Ron Miller. This guy, you might be a professional painter, I don't know what it is. I read your comments, I really do. And I know my mistakes, you know what I mean? But sometimes you kind of have to do what you have to do. And when you're in a crunch like how I am right now, how Leo, like time is, like I said, you gotta do what you gotta do. So understand the situation and understand that um, we're not professionals, you know what I'm saying? We don't do no glass work here. Though I feel like we could, if we had more time, if we were more in, in an enclosed environment. But we're not. We're in the garage, out in the open, middle of the night, with time constraints. So, I'm gonna show you guys the paint job. It's half and half. And let me explain to you why. Yeah, that sounds like my order at Panda Express. Yeah, sounds like the order we had at Panda Express yesterday, half and half. Even though, even though they gave me like 70, 30, they gave me like hella more chow mein than fried rice, bro. I'm mad, bro. I threw like two scoops of my fried rice and the thing was gone. My spoon was small, so I know, I know I didn't scoop a big scoop. But anyways, half and half. It came out half decent and it came out half questionable. So let me show you guys. I don't want to ramble on too damn long, but hopefully the GoPro kind of picks it up. We push the car back a little bit so we don't get condensation on the paint, although it is it is dry. The roof, the roof has a lot of specks on it. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot of dirt metallic. I don't think it's even dirt. I think it was spitting out of the gun or something, but um the the roof is one full solid color. 
I mean, it has this orange peel. You can see the orange peel, but you can also see the little like specks in it. The beautiful part, we have a pretty good amount of layer on the sunroof skin itself. This quarter panel is one solid color, no tiger stripes, no drips, no runs. That's a plus, but this side needs a lot of work. So what I did was I was trying to put more layers on this side to see if I can lay it out wetter, see if I could let it settle more. You know, you know what I mean? Get the image a little more clearer, but for some reason I kept having issue on this side. Now the bottom of the door looks cherry, looks good. Plenty of layers there. And uh, this little corner section right here looks good as well too. It's just this right here that I'm not satisfied with. Now Leo might be satisfied, but I know I could have done better. But again, I know what I did wrong all this weather, all this dirt, all it doesn't help. But the beautiful part about the amount of layers that we threw on this car, it's correctable. If you guys were around when I had my EJ2 coupe, I painted it black single stage from Submit Racing and we were able to cut and polish that car and make it look really good. So I have no doubt that we can make this thing look fire. It's just a matter of time letting it fully cure and then going ahead and cutting it really lightly. And now we're not cutting it to make it look like glass, we're just cutting it to get all the imperfections out. And then we're gonna do two or maybe even three stage polish. Now, the reason why I told Leo that this is 100% doable and correctable is because we're gonna have two sets of hands, mine and his, to do the work and cut it down quicker. So we're at this point now where I'm about to end the video. It is late. You guys can see the air coming out of my mouth. It is cold. And uh, pretty much all we wanted to do was fix all the rust, get the rest of the car painted. We did both of that. Tomorrow is just a windshield and none of the parts going onto the car is gonna be installed until this car is cured, cured, or even after we polish the car. So we're gonna end the video right here, guys. I hope you guys enjoy it. I know Leo definitely enjoyed the process. And uh, if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up. If you guys wanna check out some of the like, maybe behind the scenes stuff of some of the things I didn't record, be sure to follow Leo's channel at CRXSIB52. <laughs> <laughs> but with that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.